Less than 10% of our umpires correctly answered all five questions on our appeal plays quiz. Now there's a number of factors for why appeal plays are so hard to get right, including the complexity of these rules and the key differences between the rule at the NFHS level versus professional baseball. So in this video, we'll first review the rules concerning how appeal plays work and then we'll break down two MLB plays that could easily happen in one of your games. After that, we'll work through case plays to better understand the application of these rules in your games. Now, if you wanna see how well you can do on this week's quiz before going through the review with me at the end of this video, you can find a link to it in the video description. Hi everyone, Patrick Farber from GHSA Baseball, Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires develop their knowledge and skills. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out the rest of our videos. Also, if you want next week's case plays emailed to you, you can sign up in the video description. Let's get started. The defense has two different situations they can appeal in a game which are laid out in Rule 8-2. They can appeal if a runner missed a base or if they fail to tag up as soon as the ball is touched on a caught fly ball. And to make the appeal, they have two options on how to do it. The first is a live ball appeal laid out in Rule 8-2-6b. In all games, an appeal may be made during a live ball by any fielder in possession of the ball touching the base missed or left too soon on a caught fly ball, or by tagging the runner committing the violation if he is still on the playing field. Now one important note on this is that it must be obvious that they are appealing. So if a runner missed a base and then there's a play on the following runner into that missed base, the fielder touching the base doesn't immediately trigger an appeal. But if he were to look at you and say, that runner over there missed this base, then we know he is appealing and can call the runner out. The second type of appeal occurs during a dead ball and is laid out in Rule 8-2-6C. The dead ball appeal may be made once all runners have completed their advancement and time has been called. A coach or any defensive player with or without the ball may make a verbal appeal on a runner missing a base or leaving a base too soon on a cop fly ball. The administering umpire should then make a decision on the play. So let's recap that to clear up any confusion. Obviously, we first need the ball to be dead. This of course means that during a live ball, a verbal appeal without tagging the runner or base missed would have no effect. Then we simply need a verbal appeal made by the coach or a player. Note the rule does not give any specific verbiage or even require a coach to come out of the dugout to make the request. If they get your attention as wanting to appeal, we need to make a call. Now let's cover when an appeal can occur as laid out in Rule 8-2-5 penalty. The defense may appeal during a live ball immediately following the play and before a pitch, legal or illegal, granting an intentional base on balls, or before the next play or attempted play. If the offensive team initiates a play before the next pitch, the defensive team does not lose the right to appeal. Again, during a live ball and after the play, there are three actions that will remove the defense's ability to make an appeal. The first is the next pitch. After that, no appeal can be made. The second part is after an intentional base on balls, which is pretty similar to the next pitch part of the rule. The last action is by far the most complex one. They must appeal before the next play. So let's get the definition of a play, rule 2-29-1. Play is the order given by the umpire when it is time for the game to begin or to be resumed after having suspended when he called time. The term is also used to denote a unit of action which begins when a pitcher has the ball in his possession in pitching position and ends when the ball becomes dead or the pitcher again holds the ball while in the pitching position. So for appeals, we are using the second part of the definition which is the unit of action. So for example, if a pitcher attempts to make a pickoff this removes his team's ability to appeal a missed base from before as he initiated the play. However, the high school rules have an exception that does not exist at other levels. In high school rules, if the play is initiated as a response to an offensive action, such as a runner stealing, then this would not remove the team's ability to appeal the previously missed base. Now let's continue 8-2-5 penalty. A dead ball appeal may be made by a coach or any defensive player with or without the ball by verbally stating that the runner missed the base or left the base too early. Appeals must be made one, before the next legal or illegal pitch, two, at the end of an inning before the pitcher and all infielders have left fair territory, three, before an intentional base on balls is granted, or four, on the last play of the game 
An appeal can be made until the umpires leave the field of play. So actions one and three are the same as found in live ball appeals, so let's break down two and four. In two, it states a dead ball appeal at the end of an inning must occur before the pitcher and all infielders have left fair territory. Where this is most likely to be an issue is when we have a third out time play where a run scores before the out. With the out, the defense comes off the field only to learn that the run did score. They know the run that scored missed third base and the umpires are aware of this too, but because the appeal comes after the infielders and pitcher have left fair territory, the appeal cannot be accepted. Now let's see a breakdown of this in an MLB game while breaking down question five from this week's quiz. In this play that we're about to break down, it's the top of the fifth inning with one out and we have runners at second and third. As umpires, we need to be aware that anytime we have second and third with one out, this is a one out time play potential. What that means is that on a fly ball to the outfield, both runners could potentially tag up. And if there is an out made at third base on R2 running to third, this would be a time play. But let's go ahead and watch how this play develops. Infield halfway, Josh Bell comes to get this one. Now he's going to throw to third. They're calling him out on the line drive. So now you touch third base, you touch the base runner, and that should be a double play. Nobody's going anywhere. Right. And here comes Derek Shelton to argue with first base umpire Mark Wegner. It sure appeared to me that Mark Wegner put his hands right. up in the air to indicate the ball was... Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but the entire Nationals team was walking off of the field knowing that the inning had ended. And they're going to be right that the inning did, in fact, end. What their confusion is going to be is what they appealed. Caught. And now the Nats are running off the field. No, he caught it. That's a catch. So we do have a catch. We got ourselves two feet in. And, of course, with a catch. That requires that both runners retouch their base before they can advance. Both fail to do so. He booked it for home, and Adrianza. Now here's the question, and this is what the big question is that we're getting at in this play. What is the appeal that's happening here? You could certainly have varying opinions on this, but I think I'm going to go with Jeremy's interpretation of this appeal. His interpretation is going to be that this is only an appeal that R2 left early, and they're not appealing that R3 left early. Now, let's talk about the appeal of R2. Obviously, they're tagging this runner. No confusion about what they mean by the tag or whether or not that's incidental or intentional. They're clearly tagging the runner here to appeal that he left second base early. Where the confusion is, is whether or not this is an appeal that R3 left early. Remember, for an appeal, we need it to be an obvious appeal. There can't be any incidental appeals. If they want to appeal that a runner left early, they need to be intentful in doing so. Now, if there was no R2 that had advanced a third here, and the third baseman was just stepping on the bag looking at you, the umpire, then you know, obviously, he's appealing that R3 left early. But I don't think that's the case here, uh, and Jeremy didn't either. I think the fielder thinks, well, one of these has to be an out, right? I know he didn't tag up, so I'm going to tag him. And so that's why I think we go with it's an obvious appeal of R2, not so much really on R3. Of course, the fielder isn't aware that because he doesn't appeal R3, R3's run is going to score because this isn't a force out. Remember that on an appeal play, such as runners leaving early, that is a time play, not a force out, because the batter runner did not advance. And now they're saying the run scored? So we saw the Pirates manager coming out to ask about the catch-no-catch no catch call uh, after the play ended. And of course, when that's happening, the Nationals' defense is walking off the field, and they do get off the field. The umpires get together, and they confer that they did have a catch on that, and R2 failed to tag up. However, as you see here, they do signal to score the run. And the reason for that is that they did not have that R3 was appealed for having left early as well. The base. Right. This is a rules check that the team cannot appeal after leaving the field. There we go. So the Nationals realized their mistake here that they only got the appeal of R2 and weren't given credit for the appeal of R3. And then they want to use a video review, which in this scenario is kind of similar to how we would use a dead ball appeal. Uh, they want to try to use that to get the call of return. And because they left the field, even a video review cannot be used to appeal this play. That is the correct ruling. The team may not appeal after the fielders leave the field. 
Now, going back to the fourth and final action that takes away a team's ability to appeal play. Number four was that on the last play of the game, an appeal can be made until the umpires have left the field of play. Note that it doesn't say leave fair territory, it says leave the field of play, and it's all umpires must be off before they lose that opportunity. This goes back to, again, just another reason why it's important that once the game ends, we get off the field. Now, let's continue breaking down the rest of this week's case plays. Case play number one. The runner from first base misses second base on his way to third. With the ball still live and all playing action over, the defense wishes to appeal. Which of the following actions would result in a legal appeal with the runner being declared out? One, the defense touches the runner standing on third base with the ball. Two, the defense touches second base while holding the baseball. Three, the defensive coach verbally states that the runner missed second base. Four, the shortstop verbally states that the runner missed second base. Five, the defense requests and is granted time and then states the runner missed second base. The correct answers here are one, two, and five. The defense can appeal during a live ball by either tagging the runner that made the violation or tagging the base that they made the violation at. Option five, remember that the defense has a verbal appeal that they can use, but it requires the time be called. In options three and four, Time had not been called, so we can't have a verbal appeal. Case play number two. Having missed second base, the runner is standing on third. The pitcher, before any pitch, legally attempts to pick off the runner standing on first. The coach then requests time and verbally states that the runner on third missed second base. Is this a legal appeal? The correct answer here is no. The pickoff move made by the pitcher was a new play, and because that pickoff was initiated by the defense, they lose their ability to appeal. Case play number three, R2 and two outs. B1 hits a base hit to the outfield. R2 scores on the play but misses third base. B1 is thrown out trying to get to second base and after R2 crosses the plate. After the defense leaves the field, the head coach becomes aware that the run for R2 was counted. He asks the umpire for a verbal appeal of R2 missing third base since the ball became dead with the third out. A, this is allowed, R2 is out for an apparent fourth out, and the run does not score. Or B, this is not allowed, R2 scores on the play, and it cannot be appealed. The correct answer here is B. The appeal is not going to be allowed, and since R2 crossed the plate before the third out was made, R2's run is going to count. This is what most appeals after the third out of an inning are going to look like. It's going to be a team not aware that a run scored and later finding out that the run did score or that they could appeal, but after their fielders and their pitcher have left fair territory. As umpires, we need to be aware when they do so because at that point, they're no longer allowed to appeal. Case play number four. After the video has ended, can the defense still appeal that the first runner, Yuli Gurriel, left third base early? Yes or no? Fly ball, right field, Paven Smith underneath it. At third base, Yuli, he's going to tag and come home. The throw goes to third. Tucker will be safe. Yuli ties the game. Sack fly by Carlos Correa. All the Diamondbacks are pointing at third base. Let's see if Yuli leaves early. Ooh, I think he did. <laughs> Alpini got a little aggressive. They will appeal to third. Tucker is now going to break for home, and he's going to be hung up. Not sure what Tuck was thinking. That'll be an out there. The correct answer here is yes. The defense still can appeal that that runner left third base early. Now, this is not the case at other levels of baseball, but in Federation baseball, the team is allowed to appeal because they don't lose that right for making a play that was initiated by the offense. When the runner stole from third base and got thrown out, that play was initiated by the runner stealing, not by an action of the defense. So the defense still maintains the ability to appeal that that original runner left third base early. So there you have it, our review of appeal plays in NFHS baseball. If you found this video helpful for you or your association, I'm always looking for ideas for new videos or topics you would like to see covered. So feel free to send them my way in the comments or via email. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the field.